There's no movie theater, there's no record shops, comic book store. You can't bet on the horses in this neighborhood. There's very few bars, there's a brew pub. Unless you're into food, this is not the neighborhood to come to. But if you are into food, then it's Mecca. Hi, my name is Matt Jervis. I live in Berserkly, California, in an area called the Gourmet Ghetto. Welcome. Within the eight blocks, there are eight cafes, two Thai places, one Vietnamese place, one noodle place, a Nepalese restaurant, two Chinese restaurants, two sushi bars, five deli counters, two diners, two pizza places, one Italian place, a tapas bar, a South American restaurant, one four-star restaurant, four bakeries, a cheese shop, two French places, three hamburger joints, a wine shop, a pasta shop, one weekly farmer's market, a brew pub, and just opening up is this to-go place that, among other things, things will bring another sushi place in the nice bean bar. Engaging the viewer, that's something that you find in all sorts of manifestos. This is the hub that opened up here in the late 60s, where the gourmet ghetto really took off. It's a total collective, so everybody is part of the company. The cheese is from all over the world. The bakery is in the back. The place is awesome. Every morning there's a line out the door before it even opens. If you get here early enough, you can get coffee, but that's not all day. The cheese board here. Hence, the cheese board. The great thing about this place is you, instead of a number, you take a card. Okay. Acute and chronic wounds. There's some great pictures of burn victims in here. We need to stand in this line and get some pizza. And uh, today's pizza, uh, I haven't checked the window, but you don't need to because it's always really good. Oh, I think the end of the line's over there. Now that's a beautiful pie. It's great, you're drinking beer in the middle of traffic, willfully uh, breaking the law. But, um, you know, Berkeley, you know, people, the, the police around here have to pick their battles, or, you know, 24 hours later, there'll be a riot. I think it's the first time I've ever painted a dog. Now, like every neighborhood, there's a plight, and the plight's right over there, Starbucks. And, uh, hey. What can you say? The anti Starbucks, basically Pete's Coffee. This is the original place where Pete's opened up. The real diehards position themselves out here and hold court right along the newspaper row here. The Berkeley Intelligentsia. And you're always gonna find the next conspiracy on the back of that stop sign right there. Prayers and hymns. There's a lot of things here. There's Chez Panier, a real swank French restaurant. It's all started from Alice Waters, who had the basic principle of starting out of serving the best local ingredients grown in season. People would come in with a review in their hand in November and want to have the tomato salad. And I said, well, come on back next July. They post the menu out. It's only one menu every day. Or I mean, a daily menu, daily. One thing every day. This is today's menu. People try to get a reservation over at Chez Panisse all the time, all over the country. They fly in here trying to get a reservation. When you do get a reservation, where are you going to stay? So uh, conveniently located, the French Hotel, part hotel, part cafe. You can get drunk with Alice, stumble across the street, and crash in probably substandard conditions, but that's a bet. This guy, he's stepping on a rabbit, and the rabbit's saying, like a stick in the spokes. It's like a gated community, only if you pay attention to how much you recycle, what you eat, where you shop, what you drink, how you raise your kids, and where you get your coffee in the morning, then everybody's happy. Well, pizza, pizza in season. Thank you. Mary Alice. It's a great place to get your flowers. It's no crime, no sin, just a dirty, rotten shame. That's all.